and uh, let's see what we can do. Um, so brown, brown, and um, a little bit of Payne's grey, and just see what happens. Okay, now from what I remember, oh, grief. This is really testing the memory. There's a tree there. Okay, I remember it was at an angle. Um, and then there's a branch coming across here, and there's snow, and then what goes on up there? I think there's a branch here, big tree trunk there, and um, just give you a, a quick look at my palette. It's always good to show you what what where the mess comes from. Basically, that's it there. This is left over from the big tree that I just put the uh, video on YouTube, and uh, so it's all quite squidgy and a bit runny. But anyway, this, that paints grey up there with a little touch of a uh, little touch of brown in it, and it comes there. So there's going to be snow. I, my goodness, this is you know I got this weird memory thing, which is very useful. But going back forty odd years or so is quite a trick. But I think there's a branch there. Remember that? Okay, so there's going to be snow on the top of this branch, but I can't remember where it goes off up here. But I think maybe it doesn't go off up there. Maybe it comes down. I think it might come down. I've got a feeling that might be it. Oh. Um, this is a real tester. Okay, so that connects to the earth. Now, uh, the, the the bit about snow. Oh yes, and I remember there was a tree here. That was it. Okay, um, a bit about snow without painting snow, is is this? So there is. Imagine that all this along the bottom here is actually snow. So there's there's the middle distance. I don't think there's going to be much of a sky on this. There's the middle distance over there. There's going to be um, smudgy trees. Now, you, you you could, I don't know whether you want to Google Andrew Wyeth and see if you can find a painting that looks vaguely like this. Um, it be interesting to see how close this is when I finish, but I do remember a lot of brown. There's all kinds of colours coming into this. This is this got a bit of um, a bit of blue in it, but it's purely because that's what's left on the brush. Now this smudgy thing here might look slightly insane, but uh, I'm going to resolve it in a minute. Okay, paper time. Got a vague feeling the original might have been a watercolour, which doesn't matter because you can get a similar effect. Lots and lots of grey and then probably sort of ghosty images of tree trunks there. Possibly. Let me know if I get in the way. Go ahead. Okay. So again, snow without painting snow. Always a tricky one, that. So this might be water. I've got a feeling there was water. Like a pond there. And then the, the effect of snow, without painting snow, is that you just touch the, the white area a little bit. You give the feeling of grass growing up through the snow. A lot of the work is going to be on that on that tree. Okay, so the underside of the branch sort of ends there, and then it's going to be a lot of white. So I might use white paint on the branch, perhaps. I don't know yet. Or maybe, no, I won't. No, I'm not. I'm going to do it this way.
can kind of see the branch through there covered in snow. It's paper on this. It can be a big, funny how things stick in your mind. And it's not, I don't think it's totally accurate, but it's an idea. Okay, so these are the tops of the trees that are behind. Just an impression. Okay, and then there's a shadow. Not a shadow. The distant, semi-distant trees underneath and down here and put a bit of variation in those. Maybe there's a bit of room for a bit of sky up there. Um, I think something like that. I think in the original, there might have been a touch of blue in that, actually, bluey gray color. But I just happen to have some um, ultramarine. Tons of oil. We'll see what that does. Let's just do it and see. Things to be a little bit brave sometimes. I think the last time I probably looked at the paintings, it's a good 40 years ago at least. And um, I was actually teaching briefly uh, from my house in England. I think, yeah, that's all coming back to me. There was a, um, a husband and wife wanted to learn painting, and they were very interested in Andrew Wyeth, very very popular painter. Um, if you if you haven't heard of him, um, worth looking up. Very clever guy. Just same color coming down there. I wonder. Not an easy painting. Tell you what I'll do. I'm going to just go onto the tree for a minute, and make that look more tree like. You have to sort of imagine that this is actually poking out of the snow here. Um, try and make that a bit more connected. And there we are. It's poking out of the snow. So. One. Take that up there. Very important thing with trees, always go on about this, but any branches, particularly something like a, a, a main trunk, although, yeah, it applies to all branches. And it sound, it's awfully repetitive, uh, but um, don't get too thin too quickly. Tree has to look as though it can support itself. So I'm thinking, actually, let me just have a little, a bit more oil there. I want, I want there to be a tone here. So right, you've got to be a bit fearless. It's going to look a mess for a minute, but um, they all do. Put a little tone in there. Mm -hmm. 
don't know about that funk coming up there. I'm always, the, the, I think on the original, there are several trunks coming up here. Um, so I'm going to sort of guess on that a little bit, but there might even be another complete tree in there. But uh, you can put it's better if you put the tone on first, so that you don't have to try and wangle it, you know, between the between the branches. Let's try something with uh, a smaller brush. I've got these really dirty, not dirty, dirt cheap, dirty. It's a totally different thing. Um, unbelievably cheap brushes. So cheap that as you walk in the shop, they throw them at you and they say, please take these. We don't want them anymore. And I've got a feeling, whew, this is tricky. I've got a feeling there's a weird tree with a twist in it over there. I think. Was it a branch coming off? That? That's the tricky thing, you see, because it's so long ago. I think it might be a branch coming off there. I think so. Okay, something like that. Um, yeah, that'll probably do it. It's sort of convincing anyway. And I think this will appear there. And then I've got a feeling there are some other smaller trees. Maybe one there. Who knows? Paper. Now this all this smudgy effect here, I'm trying what I'm trying to do is give the appearance of a, a load of trees that but just a tone. And um Let's see how that goes. I think they should probably come down lower. There. And then there's a view through the trees to snow in the background. So all this stuff here is basically quite flat. And then we've got that branch that comes across and it bends down that way, I think. Once when I finish, it'd be um, possibly entertaining to find this picture on Google and see if I'm even vaguely accurate. And then I think come down there, and then I think up oh, that way. Yeah, that's probably it. The good thing about um, being reasonably experienced is that if this all goes completely pear-shaped, uh, when you've been painting a long time, it gives you this neat little trick that all, is always with you, and that is that you can smear this with a piece of paper, and it will turn into something else quite quickly. So it, uh, Nothing is ever ruined. Okay, so maybe I should probably. I'm just going to fill that with tone there. Okay, right. Now, I'll do more with all these tones afterwards, but at the moment I just want to get the feeling of something going on there. Now the tree, let me think, the tree could have, make the, try and make the trunk a bit more interesting and I'll come back to all that in a moment. But actually, the, that's the easy bit. It's all very well, you know, painting a picture like this. Um, and I'm sort of, you know, emulating someone else from what I can remember. But um, the, the actual easy bit is the bit that you would think might be the difficult bit. 
and uh, the tree is definitely the easy button. I might change that. I've, I've got I've got more of a memory of the shape of the tree, funnily enough, than what's going on there. I just know that there's a tone and tree trunks, and it's, I don't know whether it's quite the way I want it. So I might embellish that to something else. In fact, I'm going to. I'm going to take that bit right back. Uh, that's much more, I feel more comfortable with that. I'll turn that into a bit of landscape, but it'll be snowy. Right, so I'm going to pull that down. I know in the original, I do remember there was a pond. There may be ducks in it, I'm not sure, but I don't really want to paint ducks. So I might turn that into a landscape and concentrate on the um, actual tree trunk. And show you how to sort of invent a little bit although i do want i get the feeling that there might be snow on it on the top edge perhaps fill that tone in there see if i want to put snow on the top edge of that it won't look right unless that all these tones go right up to the tree but i'm going to add add white without adding white if you see what i mean and the white will just be where I've wiped it away. So, going by these tones, there was snow on that. It would do something like that, I think. Maybe a bit there. And again, if you're new here, uh, I always say this because if you are new and you're not used to seeing the quality of Zoom, uh, what you're seeing may be a little bit washed out. Uh, the colors that you see on the screen aren't actually like the um, the painting. Sometimes it's quite a shock sometimes at the end. Now then, branches. Branch. Where's it going to go? I don't think I like that dark bit. Get the cones right down. Now, that is too much in a painting. That, that won't work on its own. It's got to have something that comes off it or up or down from it uh, to keep interest in the picture. So um, I tend to think something that goes down might be more interesting. I'm trying try and do a little bit of a little bit of a flourish. So let's like that. Slightly larger than life, you know, you don't want to sort of tickle it, you want to make it come up with a, a nice bold statement. Now then, let's see what we're going to do here. I think this bit of trunk needs some texture coming around there. They could add a bit of white, I suppose. Um, it would make it quite difficult to add white paint to this because this is so wet. But if you're careful, you can actually do that without it, you know, just going sort of splodgy. See, for snow, snow is basically white stuff. 
on a landscape. And um, if, you, uh, if you look at snow with your eyes half closed, uh, it simplifies everything down. It takes out all the um, shadows and what's the word I'm after? Nuances. I just want to put a bit of landscape over in the distance here. So I'm going to keep it really simple. The, these things, these dark shapes here, they look a little bit like um, a whole load of tornadoes. So I'm just sort of turn them back a bit. So I'll put the landscape in and then I'll sort of make it snowy. The usual sort of stuff. Let's just have a bit of a hill. Have one of those because why not? And um, I don't actually even have any white on my palette. So see how far we can go without it. So. For instance, a, 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 a little way of showing some snow, of course, would be to just take paint off. How effective is that? Not very. Okay. All I want really is just shapes. Back to the tree. We do to the tree. We could have another branch that comes across there. Like that. And then perhaps even some really thin. Things coming off there. Looking reasonably be drunky. Um, my mind back 40 years. I've got a feeling somewhere there's a whole, you know, now to do this, you don't need to be able to draw. This is not what I would necessarily call drawing. If it is, it's a very relaxed form. The only thing I suppose that might be of help to people is to say that when you do, you know, a tree, for instance, you know, because trees really are not that difficult. Um, just keep in, keep in your head the sort of cardinal rules for trees, and that's um, don't let branches and trunks get too thin too quickly. Uh, don't have, funnily enough, don't have too many long, bendy branches. I've got, they're rather long and bendy at the moment, uh, and a few sharp angles uh, always help. In fact, maybe I'll just add a few more of those with this, this other brush. So let's try, let's just have something that... It's a sort of ghost image at the moment on that tone, but it's okay. It's sort of atmospheric, I suppose. But you notice it's like duh, 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 duh. not there. <laughs> okay, leave out the there and have more more things like this. Yeah, angle change. What are the eyes looking for? The eyes excited by things like that. So what are we going to do down here? 
I think the only YRC bit that I'm going to put in this really is the fact that there's a bent tree there. I'm gonna, I want to keep the rest of it nice and simple. And I don't want to copy anyone anyway. So. So let's have a nice bit of the odd bit of root poking out. Of course, not if I if I just paint a root, it'll look as though it's plonked straight on the top of the snow. Uh, we certainly don't want that because it pokes up through the snow. So every now and then, little bits of root will just sort of appear. So let's just add bits of them. Like so, let's have a little hint of a bit of root there. And William, I might even put in a fence for you. I know you like fences. Let's do a few things in the background just for heck but I am going to put some snow on uh, some paint white paint later but I'll do it with a palette knife just a small amount sort of selective spots so here let's just sort of invent some kind of landscape this is one of the bits I really like because it just it just sort of appears when you do this I mean I'm, I'm sure a lot of you know about this thing where you when you paint if you look at the subject with your eyes half closed so that you're looking through your eyelashes you see a simple version of uh, what you want to create in other words it shows you the important shapes uh, and leaves out all the um, irrelevant stuff so that's what I'm doing now I've got my eyes half shut and strangely mostly my left eye is closed never quite figured that out yet but interesting idea so there's a there's a hint of a landscape let's have a few Little somethings there, just ready for when I get over that side of the painting. Don't know what that'll be. And see what we can make of this. But another another brush, because when you when you get these cheap brushes, they really do. Um, they come in a pack basically, and they're, they're all complete rubbish. We only get one or two paintings out of them. That's even with cleaning them. Uh, I've got a feeling if I stuck this in turpentine, um, it would probably attack the glue that's in there if there is any. It's, I think it's just clamped, maybe. I don't know. But anyway, I know they fall apart quite quickly. Uh, let's. There's going to be more white light twigs up there. Um, but what I want to do with this is a little bit of texture on the tree. Um, and also, this is the playing stage now. This is where. Uh, you just sort of do stuff and see what happens. Actually, that texture there, I wonder if maybe I should zoom in a bit. Do I zoom in? Let's try it. That's being okay. Um, I'm just going to get some white paint ready for later and uh, just sort of put in a few twigs, basically. In hints of twigs that have snow on them. And in fact, so just to just to enhance it a little bit. 
Okay, so it's a very small amount of paint, just a little touch. Make sure that I'm in the picture here. Okay, a bit more texture on the tree trunk, but I'll tell you what I will do when we get into that. Is um, I wasn't I wasn't necessarily going to add white for the snow, but I am going to add it onto the um onto the tree trunk because um. Well, there's no reason really. <laughs> Just good I can. Have a little bit of snow there. I suppose it is seasonal, although I have to say um, the weather here is bizarre at the moment. It's um, November, obviously, and there are still mosquitoes. And I have to say, in all my time in France, I've never seen a mosquito in November. Okay, tree textures. This is this is something worth doing. It's like you know when I say paint clouds, get used to painting clouds because when you get the clouds right, everything else seems to fall into place and become easier because clouds are, you know, quite a, a thing to get used to, and um, they seem to be a milestone for a lot of people. And then when they when they realise how easy the clouds are, and you can just sort of do it without worrying too much. Always and I always have to say this. Always be relaxed when you're painting. Whatever you're painting, try to be relaxed. But um, once you've mastered clouds, start working on tree trunks. Tree trunks again aren't difficult because all I'm doing really is just this, just a piece of paper. I've got brown sludgy color on there, and all I'm doing literally is just moving in that direction when the branch goes that way. And then that direction for the one that goes straight up and putting in a few, you know, I'm taking paint off, putting in a few sort of scratchy marks like so. And suddenly you get, you know, you get a tree, you get bark. And uh, it's very difficult not to. So, For instance, this, you know, very, very simply painted branch coming off a tree. And at the moment, it looks as though it's coming off the side but you can make it look as though it's coming from the front quite easily just by adding a bit of white into the tree like so. And then suddenly that branch isn't coming off the side of the trunk, it's actually coming off on our side. It's as simple as that. And you can in fact take it another step by putting a little bit of light just underneath it there. It's ridiculously easy. You got it, and also I'll tell you what the other thing is. Um, you know, I've always tried to be into positive thinking. Uh, keep saying it, even though you to start with when you start painting, you may think, you know, um, cool, this is difficult. How am I going to do it? But you know, if you find yourself saying that, try try not to say it. Try to actually convince yourself that it is not difficult. Just keep saying, oh, this is really easy. Look, all I've got to do is just this, like so. And, you know, I've given the shape an, another dimension. And eventually you can brain, brainwash yourself into actually producing a painting that um, somebody might, might even buy one day. Mm -hmm. uh, there we are, trees, easy peasy. This shape here, I do. I do remember that the original painting had a chunk out of the tree. I don't know where. I can't remember whether it was a light chunk 
or whether it's a dark chunk with light around it. So I'm going to go for light around it. Like so. So there's a, got a hole in the tree there. I suppose my normal trees have a what I what I like to paint is the bit you know when you get the um the bark has come off and it's light underneath but of course it doesn't always have to go that way it can be the opposite so now down here you see we've got snow without painting snow and as usual with my paintings this is one of these things where you just do this sort of stuff, let it dry. Once it's dry, look at it this way. Once this is dry, it's safe, okay? Now, if, if, if you're a beginner painter and you paint a tree like this and you think, right, I'm going to get a little brush now and I'm going to do all kinds of weird stuff, you know, whatever, detail. Uh, eventually, what will happen? It'll lose its spontaneity. Now, this luckily has spontaneity. It's got that just thrown on look which of course it has, really. I've just thrown the paint on. Um, when you overwork a painting, it's the, it's the road to ruin because uh, you'll never get it back. You've got to keep it fresh. That's what I always aim for. And um, the way you keep it fresh is to, uh, it's not just that I'm teaching you and I'm moving in here, getting paint, disappearing, coming back, you know, and all this stuff. Um, it's, uh, what am I trying to say? How do I explain it? Um, I'm not, I'm not spending too much time in one area. Like for instance, I'll do a little, a little tickle here. There's a little, little tickle down that edge there to make that even lighter. All right. Now I'm happy with that. What I don't want to do is then work that to death because that is exactly what will happen to it. It'll just, it'll go flat and boring. It's interesting because of the contrast. And if you can maintain the contrast, and in fact, let's add a bit more there. Okay, that's work. that works quite nicely. Let's have a little, I don't know, whatever it is, but it's there. Okay, and let's connect this. So I think this is a branch coming from the tree. You know, for some reason I had it in my head that it might be a tree behind this one, but I don't think it was. So let's let's now connect the two together by running a little bit of light just up there. And then taking away that, there's a dividing line. You see that dark line there? If I just, I know it's only a little thing. If I just sort of tickle it a bit like so, it'll start to connect to this tree much better. And then let's take a bit of light up there. See, now these are related. I don't mean they're cousins. It means that they, they harmonize together. Yep, okay, right. So down here again, let's see, that's working quite nicely there, the way the two, the snow and the tree come together. Uh, I'm not sh too sure about that bit. So I'll just soften that just a little bit. Again, very, it's just a little thing, but they, you know, they all add up. What else? What needs sorting out? Something up there needs sorting out. That shape there definitely improves for making it slightly thicker. You don't want the tree to get thin and then sick. Okay, that just doesn't happen. So let's just see what we can do there. The other good thing about trees, of course, is that because they're so um, irregular and bumpy and, you know, they basically do what they want, you know, as regards growing, the textures get quite wild. So you can, you can do something like this and have um, an area like, let me just choose an area, okay, there. You see that now, why would that why would that weird dark line be there? Now, it wouldn't look good on a if you painted um, a car, wouldn't work, would it? 
but with a tree, because it's so organic, you can get away with it. Let's have a little line there. Let's make that more obvious. Okay, That's, that works. Good. Um, let's have just pull that across there. Why not? Have one that comes across there. Now, because I've got dark paint here, right, and I can, you know, all I'm, I'm not using a brush at all, obviously, as you know, as you can see, but if I, um, if I uh, put this on here, I can take a dark branch. I don't have to paint a dark branch, although I could, but because there's already paint there, I can sort of put this on here, and then I can do things like that. Now, could you even see, yeah, you can just about see it. Um, let's do it that side. A little bit. Yeah, you'll see it when I photograph it with the um, other camera at the end. That'll make more sense. In fact, I dread to think how this is coming across on Zoom sometimes. But what I might do, I might uh, use the other camera uh, and point it at this just when I got to the end, just to see whether there's a much of a difference. Okay, so down down across here. That's probably most of the picture you could see. Yeah, good. Okay, so there's a bit empty down there. Let's think what we can do to fill that. I think maybe let's have about a fence post. I don't think the original would have had a fence in it. I'm not sure. I don't think it did. And what colour should the post be? Good thing about snow is that it can actually be any colour because the, the snow is light and the fence post is probably going to be, a, you know, it's going to look dark next to it. And um, I think it's not, to, I'm just mixing up a little bit of loose paint here. Don't be too formal with your fence post. In other words, keep it, keep it in the same uh feel as the rest of the painting so all i'm going to do is put something across there uh and it's just for you really so um hope you enjoy it <laughs> so let's say it comes out here and there they don't have to be too close together either and then one here because you know what old fences are like they're not always uh in perfect condition there's a couple of posts, and it's going to be one of those. It's not lumps of wood. It's just going to be um, a hint. So whether I can make it work with this brush, I don't know, but we'll see. But the thing is, you don't need to do the whole thing. As long as you do a hint of it, it can break in a few places. But the eye will usually fill in the details. So you just need to show a little bit of the um whatever it is wire or whatever okay so that's just a just a small hint so um a little bit more let's just test this see what it's going to do Okay, so the odd bit of grass that's poking up through the snow. So understated, because I, I want attention to be mostly on the tree. And Trouble now. The question is, where do we put the rabbit? A rabbit in the distance is one of the easiest things to paint. So, over there, there's going to be a, a distant rabbit. This is just a bit of fun.
And what else? It's definitely got a wintry sky. Doesn't get much more depressing than that one. Um, no, I don't mean depressing. I mean um, moody. Let's see. Let's have a few more frozen. Branches. Let's have one that goes up there. Now, if you're going to do this, get your, get all your light branches in quickly while it's still wet. Much easier than putting them on later. And the one thing always remember about trees, you know, people think, oh, I'll paint a tree and I'll just do a couple of little twiggies. But when you actually sit and analyze a tree, they are covered in masses of um, twigs. So you can sort of overdo them a little bit, it doesn't hurt. It's quite a nice, um, nice feel. I'm just going to shove a little bit more snow over in the background. Now, where did I think? Uh, yeah, I think it needs it there. Well, I have to say, this has been um, different from my normal painting. I don't think I'll do much memory recall stuff for a while. Actually, it's it's a funny thing, you know, they say that the um, your brain uses a vast amount of energy. Not in everybody, but... Um, Because because I have this strange memory quirk, uh, I have noticed that when I when I the further back I go in my mind, the more energy it takes to actually recall it. And it's funnily, funnily enough, you wouldn't think, but it's actually <coughs> excuse me, uh, it's quite tiring. It's like your brain is just like. Well, my brain, anyway, it's sifting, sifting through stuff. And using a lot of calories. Hey, maybe this is a new diet. Maybe if I think about when I used to be really thin, I'll get thin. Okay. Twigs, billions of twigs. I can't remember what was going on up there. I think it might, I think it was two trees, but I don't know. We'll have a chat about that later. But let's assume it's one tree there. And then there is another one, but I've forgotten it. Okay, what don't I like? I don't like that. So that's going. There's a few bits in there I'm not keen on, but that's okay. I suppose I can sort of do this in a few places to get a few cloudy shapes. You see now, if you put a tone and you want a cloud, you just sort of take away the paint like so. Now you can probably see, yeah, you can just, you can just see some light bits in the sky there. That's actually um, the plywood. And, um, it's got some pitting, and that's just where the paint hasn't gone into the um, right into the bottom of the wood. But anyway, it, it looks okay. It looks like sort of small, distant clouds. All right, what else are we going to do? I think we're going to pull a bit of bit of that across there. Don't know quite what that is. But anyway, it looks all right, I suppose. Okay. Um, 
a little bit more work around that area and then I think that might be it for the day and next time I'm going to paint clouds so let's get a few more textures in this tree and this is where you this is where you start to you know you've got to think of form now when you if you're painting um tonalism uh, Andrew Wyeth, uh, he wasn't a tonalist, really, not in the, not in the normal sense. Um, maybe it was tone, tonalist wa watercolour, perhaps. Hmm, interesting. Um, but, yeah, the more you can sculpt, and there's no hurry, don't rush into it. Um, the more interesting a painting will become. You see, this idea, from my mind, I, I have this idea that that might have been covered in snow actually on the trunk. Maybe it was. Maybe I should... Um, let's assume that's it. So I'm just going to attempt something here. Let's just put a few bits of white there. And then maybe this may not be on the original, but I think if that's snow in there, then um, that could possibly connect. Although I don't want it to look as though I've chopped chopped further into the tree. Have a quick look in my camera. Oh, that's all right. Okay, let's have, um, let's have a lump of snow just hanging on the edge of this. So you get everything in this. You get stormy, wintry sky, craggy tree, snow without painting snow, fence posts, and a rabbit. Did I mention the rabbit? Um, what else are we going to do? I think that might be it. May, oh no, no. One one thing I do remember is that this was a this was quite a feature in the original Wyeth painting. Something about that area, and I oh, I can recall something about a bit of a mess here. When I say a mess, the branches were slightly more complex. Um, so I could probably add a little bit more there. And I've got a feeling, uh, I wonder whether he painted it um, to show how how clever he was. And there's nothing wrong with that. You know, if you're, if you, if you're a, uh, a very um, skillful artist, maybe you would have. But I, I have this... Use another piece of paper. I have this idea that there was something there that really caught the eye. Um, not sure. In fact, I think I think that must be it. I got yeah. My mind usually does hold a certain amount of stuff, so I think maybe this might have had some bits of snow on it. I can't wait to get on Google. <laughs> I, want to, I want to see what I've missed. I'm sure I've missed something. There's some wiggly thing going on there, I think. I don't know. Maybe not. Um, that's uh, just a few bits. There. And there. And I think I might quit on that before I ruin it. Okay, right. Well, it's different. So I'm going to stop the recording and then we can have a chat and I'll take a look at what you've done. <laughs>